Okay, so um, for speaker of this um, uh, second session this morning is Christian uh, Mel from TU Berlin. So Christian couldn't join us, unfortunately, in person here because of flights problems. Um, but you're happy to give a talk, um, rem a remote talk, Christian. So thank you very much. Uh, please, um, I leave you to start. Thank you very much for the introduction and also uh, thanks to the organizers for inviting me. Um, I would have loved to be there in person, so it's great that I at least can participate uh, uh, remotely, but uh, of course it would have been very nice to see all of you in person. Unfortunately, this did not work out. Um, so next, let me congratulate Nick and wish you a very happy birthday. So here you see an obligatory uh, picture where both of us are in the picture. And uh, by the way, also happy birthday to Steve. So as we learned yesterday when he was giving his talk that uh, it was his birthday um, as well. And um, Steve was mentioning the times when Nilufa and he were traveling back and forth between Manchester and Berlin. And since the groups were working um, on the same topics, at that time we established a nice series of workshops on nonlinear eigenvalue problems. And this is actually a picture from this second workshop, which is from Berlin. Unfortunately, not everybody is in the picture. So Volker and Fran are missing. I guess I don't remember correctly, but one of them is probably just taking the picture. And um, these workshops were called Berlin Manchester workshops, and that's where the acronym BMW came from. And of course, this acronym was an idea of Nick, because as you know, he likes to play with words. And just to support this last claim I make, um, let me tell you another story. So um, around that time, um, we also had, we were in the process of writing a paper together with uh, Nilufa, Steve and Volker, and um, we gave a draft of it to read to Nick um, for some comments, and it was not finished yet, the paper, and so there was one paragraph that Volker and I had written where we were not yet happy with the wording, and so we had a margin command, comment uh, which was saying, polish the English, so which was a hint for us that we still had to do that. And after we get this back from Nick, so we had comments in several parts. And also in this part, so uh, Nick had just erased the polish the English and replaced it with English the German. And, <laughs> and believe it, um, so among us, when Volker and I are writing papers together, we're still now using this instead of polish the English. So uh, we really keep this in memory. Okay, but now let me come to the mathematical part of uh, my talk. Um, so yesterday in Volker's talk, he talked about the importance of structure and also that um, Nick had uh, done quite a lot of work considering structures. And one of the structures Volker was mentioning yesterday was the Port Hamiltonian descriptor systems that you can see here. So, um, um, uh, yeah, I don't think I have to read uh, through all of this again. So the important thing is that um, you have an important quantity, the Hamiltonian of the system, which is giving like this. And um, then it's a natural assumption to assume that the matrix QT times E appearing in the Hamiltonian is non-negative because this means non-negative energy. And if you consider the underlying system without control, so that's then a dissipative Hamiltonian system, which has exactly the form given here. And in many applications, this Q matrix is actually the identity. So underlying dissipative Hamiltonian system then takes the form given here. And this is a very nice, simple matrix pencil with a nice structure. And actually two structures, a symmetry structure, because the matrices E and R are symmetric, and J is Q-symmetric, and a positivity structure. So the matrices E and R are also positive semidefinite. And interestingly, this interplay of symmetry structure and 
um, positivity structure has an important impact on the linear algebra properties of the pencil. And so that's what you can see here. Um, if we consider such a pencil, then you know that the spectrum of such a pencil is contained in the closed left half plane. The finite eigenvalues that are on the imaginary axis are actually semi-simple. The index of the pencil is at most two and the minimal indices in the case that the pencil is singular are all zero if there are any. So, which means that singularity is just the same as having a common kernel for the two matrices, uh, actually three matrices involved. And this is very nice because this means that these dissipative Hamiltonian systems are always stable, not asymptotically stable, but stable, well, up to the index, of course, this um, is the, the only place where it actually can wrong. And so this is therefore a very nice structure because it automatically um, ensures these nice spectral properties that you have. But I'm not going to talk about um, this structure in the following, but on a related, more general structure, which we call push pencil. So a push pencil has the following form. It is just a pencil where the two matrices that you consider have positive semi-definite Hermitian parts. And that's where the name posh comes from. So positive semi-definite Hermitian parts. And these pencils generalize dissipative Hamiltonian pencils because you immediately see if you consider such a pencil, well, then it is also a posh pencil where that's just this one matrix J1 is equal to zero. And why do we consider those pencils? Because there are some nice um, applications to them. And so probably most of you had heard Volker talking about his uh, disc break squeal problem. So I did not want to, because of the uh, time, to go into details here. So let me just quickly say that this problem leads to a quadratic matrix polynomial of the following form. So you have here that in the, um, the, the matrices in here, um, you do not only have positive semi-definite matrices, but um, the two matrices uh, associated with lambda and the constant term uh, do have a skew symmetric part as well. And if you um, just consider a typical linearization of such a polynomial, then this is actually a so-called posh pencil. And in the following, I will use basically red and blue to indicate the uh, skew symmetric part in red and the symmetric part in blue, such that one can easily see that indeed the symmetric part of the two matrices here is, oops, oopala, sorry, uh, positive um, semi-definite. And um, yeah, so the red part you can see is then skew symmetric. And um, that's not the only application. So another application is the control problem for the Moore-Gibson-Thompson equation, which is actually leads um, to a cubic matrix polynomial of the form given here. So A3 and A2 are an identity or multiple of the identity. And then here you have triangular matrix, uh, um, uh, tridiagonal matrices. And again, we have interesting positivity conditions. So the three uh, matrices are all symmetric and positive semi-definite. And um, then you can use these polynomials to check stability and select dominant poles for model truncation or moment matching based model order reduction. And of course, so for this, you would like to compute the eigenvalues. And so the question is, can we linearize it somehow in a structure preserving way? And unfortunately, it's not possible to linearize it as a dissipative Hamiltonian pencil. So we were then looking for the possibility of a um, posh pencil at least. And um, with a typical um, companion linearizations, this will not work. But fortunately, and this is where we met Nick again, um, there was this nice work um, of Nick and Friend together with Nilufa and Steve on block symmetric linearizations. And um, these do help here. So if you take um, from their paper, this linearization, which looks like this, 
then you only have to multiply the first block row by minus one, and then again, you end up with a posh pencil. And so um, you can, um, at least in this point of view, find a linearization that had at least some preservation of structure in it. And actually, this turns out to also work for higher degree polynomials. So there are, of course, also other possibilities of linearization. So next, um, we will see these Fiedler type linearizations. So if we have a matrix polynomial with positive semi-definite coefficients, then this can always be linearized by such a a uh, pencil where both matrices have positive semi-definite Hermitian part, at least if the degree is odd. And so here are some examples for k equals three or k equals five. And from this, you can see how it generalizes to the um, case if k is arbitrary but odd. In the case that k is even, it's not that easy, but uh, under the additional assumption, that we assume that at least the constant block a, zero or the block AK, if they are invertible, then it's also possible to find a posh linearization. And um, we will come back to this actually later and we'll see if we can say something about these posh pencils, then we can also say something about the spectral properties of this particular matrix polynomials. Okay, so uh, one important question is, we had seen that this dissipative Hamiltonian pencils had this nice linear algebra properties. Is the same true for all more general posh pencils? And unfortunately, the answer is no. In particular, this nice property that you have, that the spectrum is contained in the left half plane um, is no longer uh, true. So in fact, they, these pencils can have arbitrary spectrum in the right half plane, as you can immediately see from this very simple example here. So this is a pencil that has the eigenvalues alpha plus minus i beta, and you can of course choose it to be anywhere in the complex plane, um, as long as you choose better non-negative to ensure that the emission part of this matrix is positive semi-definite. And also the index can be larger than two. So here is an example. And also the non-zero left and right minimal indices can actually um, appear. So it seems that you cannot say very much, that you cannot say much about these pencils. But interestingly, uh, one can say something and uh, one actually, it turns out that the interesting uh, part is the underlying skew Hermitian pencil that we have. And so this is basically then saying that J's are the problem, not the R's. So everything that is bad seems come from the underlying pencil that only consists of the skew Hermitian matrices. And what you can, for example, show for singularity, well, if you have a singular chain for the pencil um, associated with a left or right minimal index, then all these vectors must be in the common kernel of the two matrices R that you have. And this, of course, means then that you actually have a singular chain already for with the same vectors for the underlying skew Hermitian pencil. So if this pencil is a bad guy, then also the full polynomial or the, the, the full posh pencil will be a bad guy. And the basic idea we are using um, always in these proofs is um, that if you consider quantities like this, so here you have a J plus R, and you know that the R is positive semi-definite, then you can immediately um, deduce from here that both parts here must be zero. And because of R being positive semi-definite, even Rx must be zero. And so this allows you to um, um, uh, track several properties back from the uh, full pencil to the skew Hermitian pencil. Um, next, let's consider the index. And also there we can say something. So if the index is um, larger than two, this also is caused by the JJ pencil, as we sometimes call it. So here it's a little bit more complicated because also the singular part of this pencil can influence the index of the posh pencil uh, P. And so the result that we have is if the underlying skew Hermitian pencil has index kappa or minimal indices of 
at most copper minus one, then the index of the Bosch pencil is bounded by two times K. And so you hear, you see that the index can actually double from the skewer emission pencil to the Bosch pencil. And here are some examples that underlie this. So for example, here we see that we have index three. And if we erase the blue one here, then we have actually the underlying uh, skew emission pencil and we see a minimal index, which is a pair of minimal left and right minimal indices, which is uh, one. And um, here in this pencil, you see we have index four and the underlying skew emission pencil. If we just erase the blue one, then we see that uh, we have index uh, two. And even more can be said. So, for example, concerning positive eigenvalues, well, you don't have to read through all these items here. So let me just briefly summarize it. This tells you that under some regularity conditions, so if you just have two matrices here in the pencils that form a regular pencil, then the full pencil is regular. And if it has a positive eigenvalue, then this is either a positive eigenvalue also of the skew emission pencil, or it comes from the singular part of the skew emission pencil, which is um, underlying here. And having seen all this, the strong influence of the skew emission, underlying skew emission pencil in the full pencil, one can of course ask the question, well, can we deduce something like this? So all the eigenvalues of the skew emission pencils are in the closed left half plane. Does the same apply to the Bosch pencil. And oh, this would have been so nice, but unfortunately, that's not the case. So um, here is a, a counter example. Um, and uh, if we now look at this uh, Bosch pencil here, actually, as a, um, a family um, where the T is a parameter where we can actually increase the influence of the R matrices here then you see that for some values of t, so here it is depicted for t going from zero to uh, three, uh, the eigenvalues will cross the imaginary axis and will be um, in the right half plane. But what we can also see from here, so if we, um, if the influence of the um, uh, positive semi-definite matrices are becomes larger by increasing T, then everything is actually going to the left half plane. And that's an important property. We also evaluated a little bit more in detail um, that um, so there is still some influence of the uh, R matrices um, in the um, eigenvalues um, such that they can be in the left half plane. And by the way, so um, if you tilt your head to the right, then you see why we call this example the McDonald's example. And okay. Um, for the further investigation, um, we introduced as a tool, uh, well, we, we used as a tool the numerical range of a pencil, which is given here. And clearly the finite spectrum is contained in the numerical range. And um, well, can happen that the numerical range is the full complex plane. Um, this, for example, can happen if you have common isotropic vectors, which means vectors such that for both matrices of a given pencil, x star ax and x star bx is uh, zero. Then, of course, here any value satisfies the equation in here. Um, but, for example, there are some situations, particular for our posh pencils, where you can exclude this. For example, if you know that the kernels of the two R matrices do not intersect, then you do not have these common isotropic vectors. And even then, you know that the uh, pencil must be regular. If we have seen earlier um, that um, if we have a singular part, then uh, this strongly has to do something with the kernel of the R matrices. And um, um, what can we now say? So when is the spectrum of a posh pencil um, contained in the left half plane? So here we have um, obtained several results. Let me just present one of them, which shows that it is not that easy. So a numerical range of the underlying skew emission pencil in the left half plane, then you have it for the full pencil, but you need additional assumptions. And one, for example, is this technical assumption you can see here. 
And this, for example, is satisfied if the matrices satisfy this condition. And uh, we were able also to relax this a little bit. So, um, which means under additional conditions, still you can uh, conclude from the numerical range of the underlying skew Hermitian pencil um, something for the numerical range of the posh pencil. And now let's get back to the matrix polynomials briefly and recall that we were able to linearize them in uh, with these uh, posh pencils. And interestingly, if you now look um, for these linearizations at the underlying skew Hermitian pencil, it turns out that it does not have any eigenvalues, but only left and right minimal indices. And these minimal indices have a fixed size, k over two, and then rounded. And um, this gives you an important information because we knew that the index of a posh pencil was directly connected to the index and the minimal indices of this tumor emission pencil. So from this, we can actually prove that um, the index um, cannot exceed the degree of such a pencil where all the coefficients are positive semi-definite. And there are some more things that you can say about these um, polynomials now with positive semi-definite Hermitian coefficients. Um, for example, um, the eigenvalues may be in the right half plane, but still they are restricted. So what you can say even for the numerical range is that depending on the degree, um, the numerical range is contained in those regions that we have here if you assume that the given matrix polynomial is at least regular. And I think I'm running out of time, but um, um, yeah, so this bound is sharp. So um, very briefly, let me come back to the cubic polynomial um, I was talking about earlier. So here um, you can get some positivity conditions on the coefficients, some additional ones to ensure that the numerical range is contained in the um, left half plane. And for this particular problem I showed in the beginning, this means um, that you can immediately um, see it here in the opposing these um, um, conditions on the coefficients of the matrices that you have here. Okay, I'm... Um, Fortunately, I'm also done because I'm running out of time. And quick takeaway messages. Well, we have seen zippative Hamiltonian pencils are very nice. So structure and positivity condition guarantees that the spectrum is contained in the left half plane. Unfortunately, posh pencils do not behave that nicely. So somehow they are posh. But under additional conditions, they are nice as well. And here are some references. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and once again, wish you a very happy birthday, Nick.